Today we will be covering foundations for getting started in Hive. This is your Hive workspace. You'll be sharing this workspace with all the other users. Your navigation bar is going to be at the left hand side. It is basically your shortcut to all the key features you will need to access easily. Let's start with my actions tab. Every user will have their own My Actions tab. You can almost treat this as your own personal to-do list. A lot of Hive users usually start their day here. It compiles all tasks assigned to you or assigned by you across all the projects in, the, in your workspace. If you have any outstanding approvals, those will show up here too. You can use the filters here to narrow down your view. For example, you can choose to only view actions within the next seven days or such as within the next 14 days. Let's move on to apps. Now workspace apps are divided into two sections. We have workspace apps and my apps. Workspace apps apply to entire workspace and controlled by admins. The admins of your workspace can come in here and toggle on the apps that they would like to make it available for the entire workspace. If you scroll down, you'll also see my apps section. Now you have control over these apps and choose to toggle on the ones you'd like to use for your own workspace. For example, you can connect to your choice of file storage, either Google Drive, Dropbox or Box. You can configure Hive Mail, which will mirror your existing mailbox. And you can also choose to sync your calendar. All right, let's move on to Project Navigator. Now, Project Navigator is the home page for all your projects. You will see a list of projects that you're either a member of or you have created. Just as a side note, you will only see projects that are visible to you. Just to go over the structure here, we have a hierarchy system. So what that means is you will have a parent project and a child, a sub project. You can nest your projects with a parent project to keep your project na navigator organized. If you want to create a shortcut to a project, you can just click on the pin icon here and your project will show up in your navigation bar. Now let's look at how to create a project. I'm going to go ahead and click on new project and I'll be prompted with two options. Now I can either create a new blank project or choose to apply a template or copy an existing project. Templates are great for repurposing your existing projects so you don't have to create anything from scratch anymore. For the purpose of this demo, let's go ahead and actually create a new blank project. So I'm just going to name this Let's just test project. At this point, it's going to ask me if I want to nest this project with a parent project. If I want to do that, I can go ahead and nest this new project with one of these existing projects. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose the rollout plan. I'm going to nest this with rollout plan. I can choose to add a new color. And I'm also going to And I can also add a due date to my project as well as a start date. I'm going to keep it pinned to my navigation panel so I can easily access it. And I'm going to click on next. Now choosing your project members. This part is really important because this is where you define the project visibility. You can only choose to share this project with yourself, just keep it private to yourself. You can add specific people to your project. So you can add one team, multiple teams, or multiple users, or you can choose to share it with everyone in your workspace. Who can edit project members? Now by default, it's gonna say any project member can edit project members. If you wish to only keep this to yourself, go ahead and just click on project owner only, and you only you will have the option to invite new users to your project. If you click on project visibility, you're going to see two options here. Now you can make this project public. What that means is this project is going to go public and it's going to be visible to everyone in the workspace, whether they're a member of this project or not. And if you put this project on draft mode, what that will do is this project will not send any notifications to any of the project members until you change the setting. So this is great if you're working with deadlines and if you keep changing the due date and assignees of certain action cards, 
then you might you might want to consider putting your project in the draft mode. By default, Hive offers six layout options. We recognize that each person and each department will have their unique way of working. So we're really leaving up to you to choose which layout you're more comfortable working with. And the great thing is that you can change your layout view at any time during the project. Let's say you can start with the status view, but then switch to Gantt view or table view at any given time during the project. The first three of them that you see here are what we call Kanban style. The great thing about these views are you can actually carry your actions, your tasks across the board. Let's look at status view. I would say that across these three Kanban views, the most commonly used one is definitely the status view, just because it groups all your actions by their status and it's the most simple way to track your projects. Team view is especially great for managers because you can see who has what tasks across that project. Label view is basically a visual way of grouping your action cards. You can assign specific labels to your actions, your tasks, and when you view your tasks in a label view, it will automatically group those actions or those action cards by labels. Calendar view allows you to see all your actions by date. It's great for looking at deadlines and milestones. Gantt view, our project managers love this one. You'll have your typical waterfall view and it's the best view for working with dependencies and milestones. And lastly, table view. Now table view is great for Excel lovers. If anyone loves a simple list format and making bulk actions, I would say they will definitely benefit from this one. And just as a best practice a tip here, when you're creating a project for the first time and you're going to have to create action cards and tasks, I would say the best layout to start with is either table or Gantt, just because both of them are in list formats. So it's easier and faster for you to just create the actions and tasks this way. Now let's go ahead and create our project. All right. Now I created my project in status view, but as I mentioned, at any given time during the project, you can just click on change layout and go to one of the other layout options here. Now to create an action card, you can simply come in here and type the title of the action card. Once I type the title of the action card, I'm just going to hit return and that's going to create my action card. To edit the details of the action card, you just have to click on the action card here and it will open up your action card. Now for an action card to function properly, I would say that there are at least three things that we should consider. You should have a clear title, which will go here. You should have an assignee. By default, it's going to be unassigned, but if you click here, you can choose to assign this action card to yourself or to multiple users or to a team as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and assign it to myself. And the other thing is adding a date. So if you click here, you'll see that you can add a due date. You can also add a start date and keep the duration that way. Now, those are just the three MVPs that we should consider, but of course, there's so much more that you can do with your action card. By default, it's going to be unstarted because we created this action in the unstarted column. But if you want, if, as you progress um, with this action card, you can move this to in progress. Once it's completed, you can move it to completed as well. Or you can come in and add a new status. So you can create your own status as well. For example, you can have a new status called in development and you can move it to that status as well. You can have priority levels for your action card. So by default, we're going to give you a high, medium, low, but you can choose to add your own priority level, your own customized one. Besides those, we also have the description. So you can add a description to your action card just to give more details. You can also add sub actions to your action and create a hierarchy that, that way. So similar to how we did with the, the projects, the parent project and sub projects, you can have the same structure here. So you can have a parent action and a sub action. If you click on return, that's gonna create your sub actions. And what's great is you can actually 
have a due date and an assignee for your subaction as well. So my subaction can have a different assignee and can also have a different deadline. You can have as many subactions as you want. And I would highly suggest keeping that hierarchy and keeping your parent actions and subactions organized this way. You can also add labels to your action. If you don't see one that's fitting to your action card, you can also create new label by just going in here and creating your new action label. You can add dependencies to your action card. And if you scroll down, there are a few other options as well. We can time track for your action card. So if you would like to do this manually, you can just come in here and add the time that you've spent on working on this action card. You can also choose to record that time as well. So if you click on record, you're gonna see that you're gonna have a stopwatch pop up here and that's gonna just start recording your action card, the time that you've spent on your action card. All right, a couple of other things here. If you enable Hive Mail, you're gonna be able to attach mails to your action card and send mail from your action card. You can also have attachments to your action card. So if you can upload files or if you enabled one of these file storage options, you can also attach it straight from your um, file stor storage of your choice. And lastly, comments. Now, if you wanna add a comment here, you can just mention someone's name What that does is it's going to notify my colleague that I have left a note and she's going to come in here and she's going to check this note. So you can add comments here. You can add description. All right. A few other things here. You can archive this action. You can delete the action. If you want to make a copy of this action, you can click on this. You can also choose to share this action. So you can share it in a chat message with one person, or you can actually share it with a group as well. And you can also share the link. So you can just copy the share link and send, um, send it to someone else. And you can also choose to snooze this action as well. If you have any questions or need any technical support, you can reach us by clicking on the blue question mark here which will take you to our support chat. You can send our team a message here and our team will get back to you as soon as they can. Now you can also search your questions by going into the search bar here and typing in the keyword. This will basically take you to our help desk articles. And lastly, if you want to make a feature request, you can submit your entry here and you can also upload any existing feature requests that have been submitted by Hive users.